Okay, Google. Turn on the interrogation light. You got it. Turning the interrogation light on. It's curtains for you. We know what you did, and we have the evidence to back it up. You're done. Okay, Google. Turn off the interrogation light. Sure. Turning off the interrogation light. Hey everyone, I'm Tony from the Handlebar Workshops. Today, we're in the Office Workshop. We're going to be working on some home automation stuff with Google and Google Home. Uh, mainly we're going to be using well, Google Home and the uh, Sonoff here. It's an interesting little device that uh, works, integrates with Google Home and allows you to turn appliances, in today's case we're going to be doing lights, uh, turn them on and off just by asking Google to turn them on and off, just like you saw at the beginning of this video. So why don't we get down there and uh, we can start showing you how this stuff is done. Okay, pretty much what you see here is everything you need. Most of this can be bought at the uh, dollar store or a Walmart or some someplace like that, except for possibly the phone, the sawn off. Actually, you can get the Google Home from Walmart, uh, but not from the dollar store. But everything else here you can pretty much get someplace that's fairly inexpensive, online or whatnot or what have you. You can see here we've got the, the Google Home, and uh, I've already got one a sawn off hooked up already here. Now, the cool thing about this is that this actually has an Arduino in it. There's some really cool things you can do with the Arduino. You can connect it to your computer, and modify the code, and play with how it behaves. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Here we're just looking at basic how to set things up, how to connect the wire to the sawn off, and then you've got the, the ability to hit this black button here and that turns the light on and off. So you can leave this sitting out somewhere where you can see it and you can just hit the button, turn it on, turn it off or you can just use Google to do it. Hey Google, turn off the interrogation light. Okay, turning off the interrogation light. You may have heard a click come from the sun off. I didn't touch the button. That's Google turning it off. But you can also as you can see on my phone here, got a nifty just a little button, the interrogation light right there. Turn that on, turns it on. And you can see as we turn it off with the button, it actually grays itself out and shows that it's turned off. Now if we turn it back on, it lightens up and turns green. There's very little lag time, it updates quickly, and you're able to see log in from anywhere. I can be at work, I can be across the country, I can log in and turn on this light. Uh, like I said, there's many things you can do with this. You can use it for uh, opening and closing the garage and stuff like that, making sure that your garage door is open and that all your lights are on or off. But right now, that's a little bit beyond this video. Like I said before, we're just going to focus on setting up a very basic turn your lights on, turn your lights off. So you can set it up in your bedroom for your nightstands where once you get all comfy in bed and you realize you forgot to turn off the light, you can ask Google to turn the light off for you. I'm going to be putting this behind the couch in my living room. So that's what we're going to be seeing right now. So to start, you need an extension cord. This is just the uh, one I got at Walmart. Still sealed up and everything else. See, this one has the three prongs on it. The one I'm showing connected to the interrogation light over here only has two prongs. It's a two prong, and that, this one's a little easier. Um, you can see that there's just the, the two coming in here and, each, and coming out here. We're actually coming in on this side and leaving over here and heading to the light from here. This one's a little easier since it's only got the th two connectors. This one's got the three connectors. You can see, as you can see here on the sun off, there's a neutral and a live. Neutral and a live. We'll be making sure we, there's, so there's only two wires that connect in there. And the third one we're going to have to connect some other way. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find your neutral and your live. We're not going to need this tag. This tag is just going to get in our way. Off. 
Now you can probably see here there's some ridges on this side here and there's non-ridges over here. The ridges go to the end terminal on the sawn-off here. Let's see if we can, can kind of see the way the shadow plays off of them. On a two-prong one, this will be the wider blade. It'll, this one will be longer than this one. But since it's got the three, you can only put it in the one way anyway, so it doesn't matter if which one's longer. But that's going to be going in the N, this one's going to be going in the L, and this is the ground, and that we will be tying together outside of the box. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a cut in the wire so that we can connect it to the sawn off. So we're just going to take some wire clippers, just cut it in half like that. Make sure, make sure this is not plugged in when you do that. You will risk serious bodily harm if you if this is plugged in. So make sure this is unplugged before you clip that. Now you can see that there's three three wires in there, three conductors. Uh, the middle one actually has green on it. That's our ground. We're going to tie those together outside of the box, and the other ones are going to go are going to connect to terminals in the box. Why don't we show those now? So take this off here. Take this one off this side here. You can see up inside there. There's two terminals, and they're they got screws on the top. The wire in there, and you screw the screws down on top of the wire, and that will hold them tight. And then you put this over it like that, and the little teeth in there grab that wire and don't let it move. So, all right, let's get to it. Nice little knife to help you separate these wires. Be careful that you don't get too far into this one and open up a wire. You, you want that to stay sealed. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to this is going to have to go over the top this is going to have to go in here so the ridges are on here on this wire here so we're going to have to go in this way it's going to go in like that and the green is going to go over the top. We're going to cut these down a little bit so that they fit in there nice. And this one is going to come in the other side. I cut right in here. So now we've got that one, and we've got this one here. So this is the one attached to the plug. That's our input. This one goes to the outlet, which is a good 13 feet down the cord. And this will go to our output. You can see our input is there, and the output is there. And I had to come back. I had to go get a wire nut. We'll use that for the grounds. I forgot to bring that out. So, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the green wires overlap each other quite a bit. So 
looks like we got a good overlap there, so I, I think we're good there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off part of the about an inch or so of this wire covering. We're going to twist this up, the end of the stranded copper wire, twist this up. The only thing to remember is that the uh, wire strippers probably won't work on these. So you're going to have to use a, a knife for those anyway. But we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Alright, so there's one. Do about the same over here. This white plastic. I'm going to twist it. Get your thumbnail in there. There you go. Twist up the wire again. So now we're going to try and measure again here. So we're going to want those to meet up, still have room for our... I oh, need to pull these back a bit more, I think. There, we should be good. All right. Now what we're going to do measure how far you can get these in here and that's gonna go over the top like that you know what I'm still not happy with that right about there is where we're gonna need to cut it Again, we're using the wire cutters here. Woo. All right, so now we're gonna do something very similar to these that we did with this one. We're gonna cut around here, but we're gonna they don't have to go, they're not going to go in very far into those holes. So we don't need to strip that much off of there. We just need to strip off just a little bit. Maybe about a quarter of an inch is really about all you need to do. You don't want to really draw the knife, you just kind of want to. Work the knife around there we go now you can see that they're fairly short lengths of wire so now we get our little precision screwdriver here and this is the plug in end Just flying all over the place around here. So this is the plug end. And this goes in the input. So the input is on this side here. We're going to unscrew these screws here. I'm not going to back them all the way out. Just maybe until they get. Oop! I backed that one all the way out. All right, all fixed now. I got. Everything all back in there, nice and the way it was. Let's not have another one fall out on us again. Now remember, the ridged side goes into the end, and the ridges are right here. And the end is on this side.
shove it in there and kind of see how it all goes in. Got the ridges going to the end. And they're pretty tight. What you want to make sure is you want to make sure that these copper bits don't touch one another. So even if that's why you want to make it kind of short. So if, if they're long like this, there's a good chance that they'll touch each other and that'll short everything out. You don't want that to happen at all. Alright, so now we got both of them in there. There's no copper wires touching each other. So we're good. Now I've got the part that goes on it, it's got the little teeth in there, you can kind of see those. And that's going to hold those two in. And it came with these little screws here for those little plastic pieces on the end. Now I get these, my hand's in the way there, but now I get these screwed in nice and tight. here. I'm going to have to use my right hand. Sorry everyone. I'm sorry I'm blocking this, but I got it this in tight so these don't come out. There. Now it's got a solid joint, solid grab on those two wires there. Now those, those are nice and tight in there. So now you do the other side. are right here. This goes in the end. Let's see if I can't get them both in at the same time. Okay. So first of all, I was afraid, as I was afraid, these are too long. They're not going all the way in to the connector. So that's easy enough. You just take this and you just snip off so you have just enough left to make a mess. You get the gist of this. I'm gonna skip ahead. All right, welcome back. You didn't miss much, but a lot of frustrated grunting. So now I've got the wires in there. If I were to make a suggestion to sawn off, would it be make make those holes a little bigger? This is a Chinese company. They sell these for the for all markets, uh, and I guess they're maybe a little undersized for the American wire gauges, maybe. I don't know. I know. Last time I did this, I had some issues as well. I did it for the interrogation light over there. All right. So, if we were just doing a two wire, like we did over here, we'd pretty much be done. But since we've got the third wire here, the the ground wire. You gotta take that into account. 